Let's talk a little bit about Libya. You were talking a lot about that. Uh, you and the president really kind of uh, had a little set to uh, last week uh, over over uh, the situation in Libya because uh, you said once again that uh, you would oppose the nomination of uh, Susan Rice to be Secretary of State. A lot of people in the administration say she is the odds-on favorite to replace Hillary Clinton because uh, of her performance on television after uh, the Benghazi attacks when she said it was the result of uh, spontaneous demonstrations in Egypt and not and was not a terrorist attack. Are you standing fast on that? Well, uh, she has a lot of explaining to do, and I, I'm curious why the she has not repudiated those remarks. Uh, on this show, the Libyan national president obviously said it was uh, uh, al-Qaeda. Um, Bob, this goes back to the beginning, this quote, light footprint policy of this of this presidency. After we helped the Libyans house Gaddafi, uh, they needed a lot of help, and they could pay for it, by the way, with an army, secure their borders, get rid of these militias. It was in a, a country that was basically chaotic, and we did almost nothing. And then there became these reports from our embassy and other personnel about attacks on our embassy twice, both in April and in June, uh, the assassination attempt on the British ambassador, the British closed their consulate. The list goes on and on. On August 16th, there was a message sent back we could not uh, repel a sustained attack on our consulate. So uh, what was the State Department doing? What was? Why didn't we on September 11th have military forces capable of intervening in a fight that lasted for seven hours. Well, so all these questions need to be answered. And finally, for the President of the United States, in the second debate, said, I said that it was an act of terror in the Rose Garden on September 12th. One, he didn't. That night, we now know, on September 12th, on 60 Minutes, he said, quote, it's too early to know exactly how this came about, what group was involved. And finally, on September 25th, at the United Nations, the President said, uh, a crude and disgusting video sparked outrage throughout the Muslim world. I mean, even on the, on the 25th, after it was well known this was an Al-Qaeda-affiliated attack and not a spontaneous demonstration, there still was this obfuscating, and that is not appropriate to American people. Uh, let me people. ask you this, Senator, because could I just say, say, finally say, yeah. I, I wish the President wouldn't get mad at me. I wish he would spend our time together in finding out what happened, what caused it, and what we need. Four brave Americans died. Their families and Americans deserve to know, and how do we prevent a future occurrence? Let, let me just ask you this, because this is a question that people ask me. Uh, if the administration misled people, if the administration was reluctant to say that this was a work of terrorists, uh, when, if in fact it was, why would they be so reluctant to say that? I think you could assume uh, if you're, you know, you look at their narrative, their narrative of the president, I got bin Laden, al Qaeda's on the run, uh, that narrative uh, of his uh, re-election campaign. Uh, he hasn't gotten, al Qaeda's not on the run. Al Qaeda is making a strong comeback all over the Middle East. They've got terrorist training camps in, in Iraq. They're, they've taken over a country, Mali, in North Africa. They're all over Libya. Uh, and it, so f I, it may interfere with that narrative. But again, also there's one other aspect uh, that you, we've covered <coughs> in other times. They, they said they wanted to not give classified assessment of what happened because they didn't want to betray sources. Well, if classified assessment changed the unclassified assessment, then why in the world would you keep that information from the American people? In other words, what you're saying is that the, the unclassified version told one story and the classified uh, information told another story. It's not they were just withholding details. You're saying they gave two different stories. Well, it certainly certainly uh, without the mention, the unclassified, without the mention, the mention of Al-Qaeda. And we all know now that Al-Qaeda affiliated groups were behind this and that it was not a spontaneous uh, demonstration. So we really need to get through this. Uh, we need to work together uh, for the sake of these families. But to, to tell the American people, even on the 25th of September, when it was well known, before the United Nations that, quote, a dis crude and disgusting video sparked outrage. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that. But well, would you, anyway. uh, Senator, would you be willing to reconsider 
<laughs> Susan Rice's nomination, if in fact she's nominated, uh, <clears throat> or uh, if she can explain to you, uh, give you a better explanation of why I give she all, gave the answer. I, she I think gave. we give all nominees the benefit of a hearing process, etc. Maybe she could start out by publicly coming back on this show and saying, "I was wrong. I gave the wrong information on your show some several weeks uh, ago." That might be a beginning, but until then. Well, you will I, remain opposed to her nomination. I, 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 under the present circumstances, I don't. Until we find out all the information as to what happened, I don't think you could want to support any nominee right now, because uh, this is this is very very serious, and it has even larger implications than the deaths of four Americans. It really goes to the heart of this quote light foot, footprint uh, policy that this administration has been pursuing, and. All of the failures throughout the Middle East that are now, the chickens are now coming home to roost.